So a little bit different view here today at Tim's Harley Davidson. This is a series I've wanted to do for a while called the Versus series, which is exactly what it sounds like. I want to take two different bikes, compare them, give you the pros and cons, throw in my personal preference on each one, and at the end of the video, try to decide which bike would be the right bike for you. So with all the models Harley Davidson makes, there are a ton of directions we could go with this. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know which two bikes you would like to see pitted against each other. I thought we would start with the 2021 Fat Bob versus the 2021 Lowrider S. I thought we would start there because I'm personally pretty torn on which of these two I like the best. I've done a full review and test ride on both of these models. I'll leave the links for both of those videos in the description if you're interested in watching that. And one thing I wanna point out that these two bikes have in common before we get into the differences are the two reasons that I like these bikes so much. And that's the inverted front end, which Harley started to do a little bit more of, but hasn't done a lot of in the past. It just feels a lot better. It's less unsprung weight when you're riding, as well as the dual disc front brakes on both bikes. Now the single disc brake bikes are not really bad, but if you do a lot of mountain riding, you're on your brakes a lot, they can heat up and kind of fade a little bit. The dual disc just helps you out with that. So to break down a few of the differences, one of the things I think makes the Fat Bob look so good is that small streamlined tank, but that's where a lot of people are also unhappy because you're only going to get 3.6 gallons with that, whereas the Lowrider S, you're going to get 5 gallons, which ultimately means less fill-ups, um, less stopping time, a little more distance. So a lot of people in the comments and on the forums were very unhappy with the fact that the Fat Bob had such a small tank. As far as weight goes, both of these bikes are really similar with the Fat Bob coming in at 676 pounds running weight, whereas the Lowrider S was 679 running weight, three pounds difference. I'm gonna assume that's probably because of the bigger tank. So you just add a little bit more fuel, which adds a little bit more weight. That's the only thing I could see that would make that one weigh a little bit more. And it's actually kind of surprising because the Fat Bob just looks like a beefier bike. So if you were to look at them side by side like we are now and say which bike is heavier, that bigger front wheel on the front of the Fat Bob would probably throw a lot of people off. Same thing with that front end. It just looks beefier and heavier, but the Lowrider S was the heavier of the two. And then same engine, the 114 Milwaukee 8 on both bikes. However, on Harley's website, they have the Lowrider S listed at 119 foot-pounds of torque, whereas the Fat Bob was 118. Why the, the one torque difference? I don't know, maybe exhaust or something, but I thought that was worth pointing out. So one huge pro on the Fat Bob is gonna be this adjustable shock. So if you're riding with a passenger or riding solo, it's really easy to dial that thing in. It tells you in your manual uh, where you should set it based on the different weights. Even if you're just riding with, you know, say an extra 50 pounds of luggage on your back, uh, that's gonna make a big difference. Whereas the Lowrider S does not have that option. Also, you'll see on the Fat Bob that you get the forward controls, so you stretch your legs out just a little bit more, whereas on the Lowrider S, you do have the mid controls, which I've found lends itself to a little more of an aggressive riding style, which I prefer. Now, you can move either of these. You can get forwards on the Lowrider, and vice versa. You can switch to the mids on the Fat Bob, which I would probably do if I bought this bike. Looks and styling wise, obviously the Lowrider has been around for a long time. Fairly unchanged. I think it's got a lot going for it. The lines are really clean, very classic look. The small little fairing on the front, club style, kind of made popular uh, by the, the Dyna guys and unfortunately the Sons of Anarchy show. No disrespect to anyone that enjoyed the show, but I think that kind of made that look popular. I found it doesn't really do a whole lot for the wind. It's more just for looks. Whereas your Fat Bob seems to have a very divisive style for a lot of people. One of the things I hear a lot of people talk about are these wheels. A lot of people are not a fan. I actually like these wheels a good bit. I really like the Harley Davidson put on the wheels. I think that looks good. 
It's kind of a tough looking wheel. I think the fat tire probably throws a lot of people off as well. That's not a look a lot of people like. But one thing to keep in mind too, I think putting more of like a street tire on it versus this one kind of looks, you know, all terrain, off roadish. I think it would definitely change the look of the bike. I don't know if it would change it for the better or worse, but it would change the look of the bike. Another thing I've heard people talk about on the Fat Bob for a long time is the headlight. So just a few years ago, they changed it to this style before there was a dual headlight. So it was two round headlights side by side, kind of meshed into one. A lot of people didn't care for that, myself included, but I do really like the look of this one. Pretty trick, pretty, I guess you'd say apocalyptic Mad Max style headlight, which I'm a fan of. Tank graphic is just a very clean painted on Harley Davidson logo on your low rider. Whereas you've got this very nice uh, painted on Harley Davidson logo on the top of the tank here. Between the two, I think I like the one on the Fat Bob just a little bit better, which is surprising. Usually I'm a less is more kind of guy on the tank. You've got the bar and shield outline on the side. So I would give this one to the Fat Bob. Moving around to the back of the bike, you'll see on the Fat Bob, this is just a reflector. It's held on with two-sided tape, so not terrible to get off if you want to take it off. Reflectors are great for visibility. However, that reflector they put on there doesn't look the greatest. And you see your turn signals are also your tail lights, which I kind of like. Um, I don't like that they stick off so much. I've seen some that you know just kind of mount to the back of this and look a lot cleaner you can almost integrate it into it also this tag this license plate holder here it does have the leds inside which i really like but i don't know if i like the fact that the tag sticks out so much over on the low rider s you do get a really nice led tail light i think harley did great with that regular turn signals here again i like to see those smoothed out or integrated I know there's a company that's making one where it's all built into one so your turn signals can pop up over here on the sides of the tail light which really keeps the back of this bike clean and I don't love that your license plate sticks up like that but I do like it better than hanging off the side of the bike like they did on the Fat Bob. As far as the seats go both of them feel really good however clearly the Fat Bob seat looks a lot better it looks a lot more premium with the stitching inside the extra little padding and it comes with it's not much of one but it does come with a passenger pillion and you get your passenger foot pegs whereas the lowrider s no pillion you do have the option to add one same thing with the foot pegs no passenger foot pegs from the factory which obviously you could add later on your handlebars the fat bob is a little bit more of like a beach style bar almost and they're fairly wide i found it was fairly comfortable to ride but they are kind of wide whereas on the low rider you get more of your riser moto bar style a little more narrow super comfortable from the factory really easy to change either one of these out but i think i would give this one to the low rider s on your dash the low rider is going to give you two analog options a speedo as well as your rpms and it does have a small screen there for all your digital readout stuff on your fat bob you just get one analog gauge which is for your rpms you get the same size screen for your digital readout there the dash doesn't go all the way down the tank whereas the low rider s it does but i like that dash i think it looks really good it's got this wrinkle finish on it which is nice so i think that one would be a toss up so performance wise these bikes feel pretty much identical obviously when you're riding you do notice the different handlebar position as well as the different seat but honestly i don't really notice a huge difference in that fat front tire versus the one on the low rider s you know same engine uh, same suspension however like we pointed out the fat bob is going to be adjustable so you are going to be able to fine tune that one just a little bit more both bikes have been around long enough that there are a ton of aftermarket parts for both i think the low rider is a much more popular bike so i think more companies spend a little more time and energy on creating parts for that one However, there's definitely no shortage of parts for the Fat Bob, so you can dial either bike in, get it set up to exactly what you need. So at this point, these two bikes are really closely matched in my opinion. So we gave the Fat Bob the seat and the adjustable suspension, whereas we gave the Lowrider 
a point for the handlebars as well as the little cleaner tail end. So I think we're at a, a dead tie on these two. Ultimately, I think it's gonna come down to looks for me and I think that's where everybody is. So you're either really divided based on the fat bob, love it or hate it kind of bike, whereas the low rider is a bike pretty much anybody can appreciate. Simple, clean, classic Harley-Davidson lines. You could see it from a mile away and know that it was a Harley-Davidson. Whereas the Fat Bob could be, you know, if you're not familiar with the Harley lineup, it could be mistaken as a different bike from a distance. All right, guys, so we've done the walk around. We've done the comparison. Before I give you my opinion, I want you guys to leave your comments down below. Let me know which bike you chose and why, and then I'll tell you which bike I would pick. So in conclusion, this was genuinely a really, really hard decision for me. I love both of these bikes. I don't think you would be disappointed with either one. However, I'm going to go with the Lowrider S, uh, $800 cheaper. And although I do like the look of the Fat Bob, I think I like the classic look of the Lowrider S just a little bit more. Thanks for watching guys. Let me know which two bikes you want me to compare next. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not. Thanks for watching.